So you, you hold, you're standing there in the street, you press the pickup button, you know, whatever, you know, I want a taxi. Uh, your phone then connects to the local marketplace, finds a driver that matches your requirements, your location without any personal, personal identification, uh, and all of that is released to the prospective drivers. So we're able to broadcast a signal that somebody's looking for a, for a cab, okay. and all the drivers, but we're not broadcasting your phone number, you haven't used your phone number to sign up, you haven't used your email address. Why is that nothing. important? Why do, why do I care about that? Like, don't they need that to know who I am? Well, whether you care about it or not, it's not necessary. So uh, okay. people who do care about it will be happy to hear that they why don't have they to care sign about up. That? Um, well, people are quite wary of their privacy and there's fairly good reasons for that. First of all, you're giving your email address to the company so they're using that for other, you know, all manner of things. Plus you're revealing your identity to perhaps people you don't trust. Uh, you, you, wanna, you wanna look after your identity as much as possible. It's very sacred in a decentralized world. You don't just hand it out, you know, whenever you feel like it. It's, it's, when it's required, if it's ever required, it's required for very specific reasons. It should be transparent and known to you. So in this case, this is not one of them. What they do need to know, however, is that, that you, the drivers would need to know your history. It's quite, the network. Yeah, sorry. It's, this is quite a strange thing there, where when I think about the current system, so if, I, if I'm talking to, I, I send a, a message and that a driver responds and he can see my picture and he knows some of my details. I give these companies sort of my email address or my phone number. And it's almost like I trust that, that company, the middle, big centralized company to kind of guard my, they're like the sort of big brother, they're watching out for me. So whilst I don't want to give out my information, I sort of trust them to be the, the big bully who if anything goes wrong, they'll enforce it for me. Do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, sure. Does that work differently? Yeah, and, the, and there's some value to that. Yeah. And you can definitely... You, you can feel safe, you know, with them watching my back. Or Absolutely. It's not a very good solution. It's okay. not a very good solution in terms of engineering, but it's definitely, there's some value in it. It doesn't mean it's completely worthless at all. It's okay. certainly, at the, at the earlier stages, before we have these properly engineered networks, then that would be a valid way of doing that. But then with that comes a lot of downsides. So we've seen the ex examples of where that's failed quite dramatically. We've seen lots of scandals in that regard. We know that those central companies get hacked quite a lot, that okay. there's constant leaks that's of all your information. There's, I mean, th this list of why that doesn't work is much longer than the list of why it could be useful. So there are ways around that sort of sense of security I have with the centralized model. There is security also built into the decentralized model. It isn't just there's no one watching out for me or, you know, I have to keep everything hidden otherwise. Well, there's much more security okay, sorry, yeah, go on. In, in terms of this model, but we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, the, the idea that you have a, a sense of security with these institutions is fair and uh, don't want to take that away from every, anyone. Of course, you can continue with that. What, what we will eventually demonstrate is that the security level of these systems is an order of magnitude higher. So that's brilliant. That's so, brilliant. Well, we have to prove that first. Yeah. I mean, it's no good me just sitting here saying it. We can, we can describe that process in some detail, obviously not to bore people, but so basically we first, we first contact the driver. Uh, so you could be subscribed at this point. You're, you're, Called the, you press the button and the drivers are aware of a driver, of a rider needing a ride. Yeah. So they now have, a, a, they need a certain sense of security too. It's not fair to expect them to just pick up anyone. Yeah. It's not based on your face or your identity or, or your country or your this, that, the other. What it's based on is your history and your reputation within that network. Now,